Good morning and welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin and I'm here with Ife Oshunkeye. What's up, man? I'm all right. How are you doing? Not bad. You? Good. Good night. Nah. <laughs> okay, let's not get into why it is nah. <laughs> Anyway, um, we're starting with some church conversation this morning. Um, you know, Mokri says church weddings and for better, for worse, are satanic. He said or tweeted, and I quote, um, no part in the marriage at Cana. Jesus played no part in the marriage at Cana. The only thing he did was turn water to wine during the feast that followed the wedding. If you want to justify church wedding, then couples should go to church with water for the pastor to turn to wine. The, pr the power of a priest or pastor to announce you, man and wife, comes from man, not God. Read the Bible, it is God's letter to you. There is nothing like that in the Bible. Marriage is a family matter involving the couple and their parents only. For better, for worse, is in sickness and in health, is satanic, it is a curse. You are accepting an evil prophecy. God's testimony about you and your marriage is that goodness and mercy shall follow you, or not some, the days of your life, Psalm 23, verse 6. And that is, end of quote, from Reno or Mokri. If I do you agree or disagree? I've always been um, in support of most of the things um, Reno has said. Of course, I've been against some, but mm -hmm. this is one of those ones that are just so absorbed and you'll be wondering why one would come out to say such a thing. Yes, I understand where you're coming from, that it's not biblical, it's not this, it's not that, but saying for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and health, and all of that is what should come, even if it's the parents, even if it's not the pastor's duty to join the couple together. I think it is something that it's inevitable in a relationship. You know when you're in this, you're in it for the good times, the bad times. So my first question is, is Reno married? And I found out that he yes, is. he is. And the question is, did he get married in church? And I found out that yes, he did. So I don't understand where he's coming from. I don't know if this is clout. I don't know, but I don't think it needs the clout anyways. But at the end of the day, I think you should focus on um, being against Buari because I think it makes it a whole lot more sense doing that <laughs> than trying to come and talk about relationship and stuff like that. We don't even know what's going on in your home. With due respect, I really do not understand. This is something that has been in existence even way before I was born. My parents got married in church and they're together in sickness and in health, in for richer, for poorer. I've seen it myself and I've seen people live happily with that notion with that principle of being a couple so you coming out to say this is like okay yeah then let's change everything then then let don't let us talk about the whole issue in cutting and the respect and all of that then let's change everything if that's what we have to do to make everything right so you don't come and pick and choose the bible passage that pleases you to support your dumb tweets wow okay that was very strong but at the same time, I think I understand where Reno is coming from. This argument is, or this conversation about church wedding is not starting from Reno. I've seen it somewhere. I can't remember where exactly, but um, it's an ongoing conversation, and they bring out facts when they're talking about this. And it's a case of saying there was really nothing like church wedding in the Bible. Like, we are the ones who put so much pressure on ourselves. Yeah, to because, say, because there are so many people that would do everything. Culture. Not, no, not necessarily. The it traditional has wedding, it has become, yes. Yeah. Be, and be, this culture that we are, we are claiming it has become as is a culture that is putting so much pressure on people right now. Like, if you don't do the church wedding, then maybe you're not married or whatever. And the truth is, the most important part of you getting married, as far as I'm concerned, and from where he's coming from, is the fact that your parents or those are your family members are in consent and you have seen each other, met each other and agreed that this union is coming oh. together. All right, so I'm going to ask you a simple question. Even if it's the parents that join you together, mm -hmm. what advice would a good mother or a good father give to you when they hand you over to a man? 
and they tell you that, okay, this is your husband, this is your wife, she has become a part of you. Mm -hmm. Do they expect you to leave that person when he's sick? Yes, the goodness and mercies of the Lord shall follow you all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. But we all know that life is not a bed of roses. Every single now and then you're supposed to face obstacles. It is how you handle them and you cross over those obstacles that really count. So you come in to say, goodness, goodness and mercies shall follow me all the days of my life, even in pain, because okay. I know it is a phase and, it, and these two shall pass away. She I'm usually not the to person talk. trying to defend Reno because there are so many things he talks or mm. tweets about that I do not agree with and yeah. I just walk away or walk past them. But um, regarding what you just mentioned, for better, for worse and all that is now becoming like a monotonous phrase mm -hmm. that must be in your vows when you're getting married. You know, and he is coming it, from the angle of very saying you do not need to it is a very you do ambiguous not need statement. to always proclaim that or say that. I mean if you're getting married to somebody, common sense lets you know that this is not going to be a bed of roses. It's not until you come out to say for better, for worse, for richer, for worse, okay, for right. So before you, and so many people have said that, I still walked away from the marriage. You know, so that's I think exactly, we need to get to a point where we exactly. get um, um, vows that come from the heart, not something that you think because this person said it, then I must say it. I think that's, that's where exactly he's where from. I'm getting to yeah. with this: that the for better, for worse, it's not just a biblical thing. I think it is something that is intertwined. Do you understand? When something is intertwined, there's no way you can separate it. Mm. So do not try to separate something that is part of a marriage. And if you're getting married to somebody, you should know that there will be ups and downs. Now, people are attributing the for better for worse. So even if the man is physically abusing you, is that for better? For... No, that's not what we're saying. For better. But at the for... same time, there are people that have used this for better for worse to justify what you're talking about. I right don't now. think anybody that knows the Bible would use that. Uh, they have. Trust I, I, me. Well, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't <laughs> think have. anybody that knows the Bible. And they claim to be pastors. They claim to be pastors, but do you listen to everything your pastor says? Your pastor is human. Blood and flesh is what he has. He's capable of making mistakes. We have fallen angels from heaven. If angels can make mistakes, who are we not to make mistakes? All right, um, I think that is where we need to go on a break. When we come back, we'll have some tea on Britney Spears. We'll be right back. What we do not understand, we will stigmatize. What you can see is the remaining of the tanker that exploded. The suffered equally confessed. A 500 naira they collect them. With no talk, they will beat you. Now you draw the five and they pay. Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Up next for conversation, Britney Spears' father sues blogger for defamation over free Britney-related allegations. According to the complaints filed Wednesday in Los Angeles County Superior Court, a blogger named Anthony Ilia has been one of the loudest voices in that crowd. James Spears claims Ilia has made it his mission to ensure Britney's conservatorship ends without any information about the reality of the situation. Uh, for me, I think we have escape goods. <laughs> mm. No, I don't even think it's a matter of escape of um, being a scapegoat. I think this is um, you. This is the sensationalization of the media that we've always been talking about. Now, there's 
um, suing you for defamation based on the grounds that you don't even have the facts. They are not even saying that, oh, what you did was wrong. Mm. They are saying that you didn't have the facts, you didn't have the proper information about the situation, and you went ahead, you went to start a movement, you know, you were like the one going and saying things like, oh, they're not letting her drive a car, they're not letting her use a phone, and then pictures um, emerged online showing that she's actually driving, she's using a phone. Now you're the same person saying that, oh, she checked into a mental facility, she came out of that mental facility, she said something different, even though at some point she kind of supported the Free Britney thing and all of that but we all know that is based on the conservatorship concerning the fact that it is only jamie that is in charge mm -hmm. now the problem is we want other people to be involved in the conservatorship doesn't mean that my team and my father are putting me under undue pressure so i think jamie is on us right suing for defamation mm -hmm. of character especially if this is a different ball game entirely if they're trying to because i i thought about it and and I read about it and I figured that, okay, what those people are only saying is that, okay, is my father is so, is, is more like a tyrant. We need more people involved to be, she's not saying I don't want no cons conservatorship. She's not saying I want to be in charge of everything. She's not saying I'm good enough to take charge of my own stuff. She's just saying, or oh, a mother came out to also say that, okay, I'm filing to also be a part of the conservatorship. I so feel earlier- like the story has, has gone up, down, and right now, like he said, rightly, Jay, the father, we don't even know the true fact of the story mm -hmm. because they come out today and make it look like the father is the issue. They come out tomorrow and make it look like Britney Spears has the issue. Like, but I f why can't Britney Spears herself just grant an interview, not a written interview? Like, a mother, come out to let, mother and the mother thing, said no. Yeah. I think they need to... I, I understand what he's doing. He wants to clear his name and clear the situation, mm -hmm. at least using this person and coming out to let you guys yeah. know you don't have facts. But at the same time, there is no smoke without fire. But you know what? It's high time they allow her come out and speak But you know, you know the beautiful thing about this? Um, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. now, you don't have um, the full situation and you went out to post all those things, right? Mm. Now, the question would be, what is the situation? Mm -hmm. Now, you owe us an true. explanation. You have to tell us. So that's the beauty in this old dilemma yeah, because at true. the end of the day, we are going have to, to share get... The situation yeah, involved. because we are going to get Because you have to prove that closure. she doesn't know the true situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So hmm. that's what I'm just looking forward to. I think I'm beginning to. to love this case. We have so many pending cases <laughs> in the entertainment <laughs> world that keeping up is a problem. Anyway, up next, Mitchell Williams admits to contemplating suicide following end of engagement. The former Destiny's child star was so depressed after ending her engagement last year she admits the decision weighed heavily on her and took her down a dark road she says and i quote i was weak very depressed and thinking it was the end of my life if if someone had asked me where i would be today i didn't think i would be alive because i was so broken i felt as though i had failed publicly and privately too and that was just not like me I was like, God, there got to be more, she tells Essence magazine. Okay, um, I think this is a case of picking yourself up from a very difficult place because mm. from what I read, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, I think the guy ended the relationship. Mm. It wasn't from her end. And <laughs> at some point, I read somewhere where she said that um, if she was him, that she would also end the relationship with herself. That I mean, nobody wants a depressed wife and all that. but. Mm. I don't think that is enough excuse. I'm sure there was somebody who will come forth and love her um, for who she is and understand her person. Mm. She also mentioned that she had to go to rehab, which is one of the things we talked about here, that once you're going through something, there is no known rehab for you to even go here. Like, you just have to keep Arrow. dealing with it. Yeah, about left. Wow. <laughs> you have to keep dealing with it and dealing with it until you come out of it somehow. But I just like the system they have in place to tackle mental health issues and I like that they are also openly accepting it and mm. taking the help they need. Yeah, so about this, I don't even want to um, base it on the 
um, relationship because she went back to give a background history on how um, she's been suicidal since she was 13 years of age. She said when she spoke to Matthew Knowles, the then manager and father of Beyonce, that he was just like, look, you just signed a multi-million dollar deal. You just, um, you're about to be one of the biggest um, pop star group in the world and then you can be depressed and all of that. And she said maybe she was just tired. And I remember the interview we had with Mo Cheddar as well. She said, um, during her lowest point when she was depressed, whenever she told people like, oh, I'm depressed, the next thing anybody would tell you is that uh, you're just bored, come mm. on man, your career is picking up, how can you be depressed? But I think it's way more than that, it's deeper than rap in, if I have to use the hip hop language, yeah, so it's deeper than rap and I believe that um, Depression is something that comes from within, the same way that happiness is something that comes from within. It is how you want to view yourself. Sometimes circumstances in life can get you down and you have to pick up yourself, dust up yourself, but not everybody is that strong to mm. do that. And I appreciate the fact that Kelly Rowland is coming out to say this and it's only understandable that she would feel that way. considering. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. yeah, Michelle, Michelle Williams, yeah, part of the um, Destiny's Child. Yeah. Yeah, so it's only right because, yeah, I think the reason I called Kelly Rowland is because I was going Destiny's to Child. do a comparison of um, Beyonce, Kelly Rowland's career and yeah. her career. You discover that Beyonce was doing way better than all of them, followed by Kelly Rowland, and mm. she was like the underdog, mm. even though she was part of a group that was very successful, but she was still like the underdog. She was like an underground artist in a group that was globally known. Mm. Do you understand? So it's understandable that she would feel that way, and then coming with the relationship, and I like the fact that she said um, she felt she failed in her public Obviously life and her private life, life because mm -hmm. her relationship is a private life. Her career is a public life. And she's seen as an underdog in her public life. In her private life, she got dumped. So I like the fact that she's also going for um, rehabilitation, getting herself straight. And I think things can only get better from here. All right. It's time for another quick break. When we come back, we'll touch on the Wale Shoyenka saga again. We'll be right back. <music> You're watching Plus TV Africa, and this is Tea Time. I loved the energy when I came in here. It was okay. so positive. I was like, I can't, I can't live here. My real names are Akbohi Kubo, Akbohi Kubo I think my father is a comedian, because most times when he calls me, he's like, yo, make sure you use condom, you know, them girls out there. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so are you telling me I should have shot my shots? If you have a younger brother, <laughs> age so is nothing but a number. Beautiful. What? I'm a vampire. <laughs> I believe in equal rights for okay. women. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that a man is the head of the house. So okay. we need to draw our limits somewhere. I feel so good. I can I do my jam now? Yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back. Moving on quickly to our final story. Tosi Odunfa reacts to backlash after claiming to be the man who ordered Shoyinka out of his seat. Um, I'm sure we all remember this story. Mm. And he has come out to respond to the whole backlash. Mm. And um, I mean, he's still saying the same thing you said on the show. I think that was two days ago when you were trying to show us the intelligence in what he yeah. put out there. And I think, well, he has come out to outline the lessons and why he did it. And while I was reading, I was like, oh, he first told us this already, yeah. right? So, yeah, maybe you want to touch more on it. Um, I just think um, it's really sad that what uh, Tosio Dunfa did went right over a lot of people's heads. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason why he would want to backlash a man like that, mm -hmm. because if you actually read it and you understood it, you mm. wouldn't even stand to even say, instead you would commend this man for standing up for 
Human, should I put it as human right? Because you're actually standing up. He said up. he was actually standing up for the youths. Maybe I should read out his three lessons. Yeah. One, he said, let's let's not judge the guy based on his physique, fashion sense, and definitely not his age. Mm -hmm. What if he had an acceptable or even empathetic defense? Then two says our, educa our education system is in trouble and the state of history as a subject in the curriculum is a case in point. Mm. Some people in their 20s do not know Prof. Professor Wallace Inka, who is actually an icon, mm -hmm. I hold there. Then mm. the last um, lesson he pointed out, saying the importance of inclusion, a united front of old and young women and men in solving Nigeria's complex problem, not just one group. Great. Mm. I like the fact that you just highlighted everything he just said. And he's talking about profiling. Mm. Now, let's start with the fact of profiling, saying he's tattooed, more so, baseball, <laughs> you know, baseball cap and all yeah. of that. Yes, number one, that's profiling. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the, he spoke about the educational curriculum in the sense that, look, Wally Shoinka is an icon, and mm. really, he should be in most of, I don't even think, um, I studied Wally Shoinka. Okay. I know I read a few books from Wally showing a car like Sarah, well, um, one of the old ones, you get me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I like the fact that he said, look, we should be a united front. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to cut you. He also said um, he has become truly passionate about a few things, which includes fairness, youth, gender, gender and rural inclusion. Yeah. So, in terms of all the inclusion which he is called i think this is what we all need because unity is not about one group it's not about the youths being united mm -hmm. it's not about the old, old men being, being united, united. Yeah. it's not about the old women being united it's not about the cabals being united it's about everybody, it's about being united. everybody putting all hands on deck mm -hmm. and then we're doing the right thing together so and the profiling part is where i really 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 want to pick up on because a lot of people tend to look at you and not give you a chance to speak because mm. they, they have already concluded that, okay, this is this person. But I think um, we're also the same people that came up with the saying, do not judge a book by its, its cover. cover. So if we are not, if we are saying, it's like we don't practice what we preach most mm. of the time because if we are saying, do not I mean, judge a book typical. by its cover. Yeah, do not judge a book by its cover, but yet you profile the man, tattoos, showing off his biceps, blah, 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 wearing a baseball cap. Now, I, I'm still going to go back to the police force in the sense that this is the same thing that they is do. ongoing. Mm -hmm. They profile you based on your looks before they even give based you a chance gadget. to speak. Based mm -hmm. on your looks and your gadget, exactly, and your car. <laughs> 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 so at the end of the day, I think um, Tosin Odufa is... Um, becoming a young Wally Shoinka. Mm, and like I said, he impressed us more than his son ever could in that letter. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's exactly where we wrap up on this episode of Tea Time. Join us later today for a fresh episode of the program. Remember, you can always be part of the conversation by using the hashtag Tea Time on social media or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Until then, my thank you goes always to my co-anchor, Ife Oshunke. Thank you All for right. being here. Mm -hmm. The entire production team as well. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and have yourselves a lovely day. Mm -hmm.